So friends, ready for chapter number two? As the title of the chapter is Types of Duties. Friends, this chapter is relevant for theoretical questions and more important for practical questions. Right? Because with the new law of GST, there is bound to be a practical question related to these in the exam. And to a certain extent, old provisions also continue. If you know little bit about GST, then on petrol products, diesel, petrol, crude, gas, those have not been covered in GST till now. So those will continue to be governed by old laws, that is excise, additional custom duty, special additional custom duty. Right. So as of now, there are little extra provisions which we have to do in this chapter. Right. So you have to keep the material, notebook and pen ready. Okay. In the beginning of the chapter, what is given is what is the learning outcome is what is expected from you that you should be knowing once this chapter is completed. There is comprehend various types of duties leviable under the customs law, right? It doesn't say under the customs act, right? So let me explain you first of all this itself. So we are talking about customs law, okay? Now in this mainly we have two acts. One is Customs Act itself and another is we have Custom Tariff Act, right? Customs Act, this talks about basic custom duty only. right you remember when i when we were talking about section 25 i told you that this act that is customs act talks about basic custom duty only all other duties are under the custom tariff act right so here we will have number of duties and majority of the duties are under section 3 section 3 1 section 3 3 section 3 5 section 3 7 number of duties are there then section eight, then section 6 then section 8 then section 8b then section 9 then section 9a lot many duties are there but all those are covered here okay so that's why in the first point itself underline the word custom law it doesn't talk about custom act okay number two analyze and apply basic custom duty integrated tax goods and service tax compensation says and education says on importation Right. So here, once one thing you have to understand and remember that education says, secondary higher education says, continues to be applicable under the customs. Right. So general impression that these says have altogether been removed. No, these continue to be applicable as far as customs is concerned. Right. And here they have given analyze and understand the applicability. So where which tax will be applicable, whether IG, whether IGST will be applicable or additional custom duty will be applicable, that you have to understand. And it is very, very easy to understand that as of now, only petro products, right, which are there. And alcohol for human consumption, which doesn't come under GST. For that, the provisions of, old provisions of Excise Act, those will continue to be applicable and that's why additional custom duty, special additional custom duty will be labeled on diesel, petrol, crude, gas and air turbine fuel ATF. Okay. So on those old provisions continue to be applicable and for remaining the new provisions will become applicable. Point number three says, analyze and apply protective duties, safeguard duties, countervailing duties, subsidized articles, anti-dumping duty. These are, these are other duties which are only under the custom set. So where and how these duties will become applicable? Protective duty, safeguarded duty, duty against subsidy, 
anti dumping duty everything we are going to discuss in detail next is appreciate the emergency power of the government to impose or enhance the import and export duties so government has got the right to increase or impose new duties so existing duty can be enhanced can be increased and new duties can be brought in and identify the cases where countervailing duty or subsidized article and anti dumping duty will not be levied so where it is the act is providing for levy of duty there are also specific cases where anti dumping duty will not be chargeable or duty against subsidy will not be chargeable so once you know the details about that particular duty these points are already understood right so in the beginning itself i told you that this chapter is relevant for two things one is theoretical aspects the legal aspects and another is practical applicability so as far as practical questions are concerned this becomes very very important chapter right so where the practical applicability you will see that we'll see only when we do the chapter on valuation so in that chapter we will be doing not only a determination of assessable value we will also be computing the amount of duty payable on those articles so when it comes to the computing of duty so unless you know all the duties which are given in this chapter you cannot compute so that's why for practical purpose you should know this and this chapter has got equal opportunity or equal possibilities of theoretical question as well right like anti dumping duty generally you will not see that in the practical questions or duty against subsidy so these are more chances of theoretical question being asked okay so now let's move to page number 2 of the chapter number 2 This talks about basic custom duty section 12 of the custom act and section 2 of the custom tariff act itself. So friends the very first heading itself is important that section 12 of the custom act says that unless otherwise provided in the act or any other law all the goods which are imported in india or to be exported from india are liable to duty as, as per the rates specified under schedule under the schedules of the custom tariff act. so duty is chargeable because of section 12 of the custom act and at what rate that is specified in section 2 of the custom tariff act so these two sections have to be read together section 12 of the custom act and section 2 of the custom tariff act right so let us put a title like this we have basic custom duty for this provisions are we have section 12 of customs act and we have section 2 of custom tariff act right so friends a long time back this itself was a question which are the two sections connecting customs act and custom tariff act so friend these are the two sections which are connecting these two acts in section 12 reference of custom tariff act is given and in section 2 reference of custom act is given so these two sections combine the goods each other right now they talk about the rate what is the rate <coughs> as far as the rate is concerned at what rate duty is chargeable friends i hope you remember section 15 and 16 right so actual rate will be that but here what we are talking about that for that purpose we have two schedules in the custom tariff act it is schedule 1 and schedule 2 schedule 1 talks about import duty and schedule 2 talks about export duty right in case of import duty when we refer the schedule 
or we go to the chapter number 3 of the customs, you will find that in case of import duty, there are two types of rates are given. These are, the rates are standard rates and we have preferential rates. Two types of rates are there for almost every article. Preferential rates, these are only if goods are imported. Goods are imported from a country. imported from a country declared by central government declared by central government as preferred nation right so friends this declaration depends upon bilateral agreement between india and that country so in that country the goods are sent from india that is given a preferential treat so those countries give us a preferential status in that country and we reciprocate that by giving the preferential status to their goods in our country that is what the trend is okay and then proceeding further, this is conditions to be full, fulfilled for preferential rate. Now it, I am on page number 3. This says, at the time of importation, he should make a specific claim for preferential rate. This is for the importer that if he wants to avail the preferential rate of the import duty, he has to make a declaration at the time of import itself that he wants to avail a specific uh, preferential rate. He should also claim that the goods are produced or manufactured in such a preferential area. So preferred nation or preferential area carry same meaning and this should be notified under section 4.3 of the custom tariff act as a preferential area. So the duty is chargeable under section 2 but under section 4 subsection 3 the government is having a right to declare certain areas as a preferential area and if that area has been declared and the goods originate from that and it is proved by the importer only then this rate can be claimed. Number D the origin of the goods shall be determined in accordance with the rules which are made as per section 4.2 of the custom tariff act. And if all these conditions are satisfied, then the custom duty is payable on preferential rates, otherwise standard rates. Okay, so friend, this is the first duty chargeable for under the Customs Tariff Act, read with Customs Act, right? And this will be computed on assessable value, which is determined under Section 14. Okay, so directly we take assessable value. And on that, we will calculate the amount of duty. Right? Now, friends, before I go further, let me explain you something here itself. The duty may be, the duty may be either a specific duty or this may be Ad valorem duty. In case of a specific duty, amount of duty is fixed for each accessible unit of goods amount of duty itself is fixed it is not the percentage it is the amount of duty itself is fixed okay and this accessible unit for every article this may be different this may be grams centimeters liter 
or some other parameter these are just example so the amount of duty is fixed right so irrespective of the value value of the transaction may be less or more but the amount of duty is already fixed ad valorem here we have rate of duty is fixed and this is on the assessable value so if the value goes up amount of duty goes up if the value comes down amount of duty automatically comes down and one example of that we had already seen in section 22 abatement of duty so where the goods get devalued because of damage after lending in India then the amount of duty chargeable is reduced in proportion of the devaluation of the goods so this is only in this case if the goods are covered here then nothing can be done right so at valorem duty this will change right so duty is of two types either a specific duty or ad valorem duty okay and we'll discuss that in detail sometime later on as well the next number two we have integrated tax this is being referred as integrated tax right and this is on all the good imported goods unless specified otherwise and the rate of duty should not exceed 40 percent rate of duty should not exceed 40 percent correct so this is covered under section 37 so we have now integrated tax this is section 3 subsection 7 and rate this is max 40 percent and this is applicability for all those goods which are subject to GST for supply in India. So in the GST we already know that the taxable event now is supply there is nothing like manufacture nothing like sale it is only supply. So all the goods which are subject to GST if those goods are imported from outside India then then an integrated tax will be chargeable and the rate given is maximum 40 percent right and for to make it much more simpler for you IGST is equal to aggregate of CGST and SGST right so whatever CGST SGST is chargeable the aggregate of that becomes the rate of integrated tax so if if the, there is an interstate transaction IGST is chargeable similarly the goods imported that will those will be subjected to integrated tax so the rate will remain same then we have number three that is goods and services tax compensation says this is coming from another law this is covered under section 39 of the custom tariff act and this is goods compensation says is a compensation says levied under section 8 of the goods and services tax compensation to state act 2017 so friend this is a new law which we will discuss in detail under gst but here you can understand simply that all the states rather many of the states were against implementation of gst that because of they will lose some portion of the revenue so the government made a new law and some compensation will be paid by the central government to the state government for compensating for the loss of revenue. So this says GST compensation says the levied on interstate supply of the goods or services and interstate supply of the goods or services to provide compensation to the state for loss of revenue due to implementation of GST in India. It may be noted that GST compensation says will be applicable only on the supply of the goods which have been notified by the government so this compensation says is not chargeable on all the goods this is chargeable only on the goods which are notified by the government for the purpose 
and these are a different kind of goods these are either luxury goods or those are called sin goods sin goods are for example pan masala gutka etc so wherever this compensation cess is chargeable if those goods are imported then this amount will also be chargeable right and now we have to understand two things what will be the assessable value <coughs> so assessable value for basic custom duty and for integrated tax and compensation cess for basic custom duty the assessable value is as determined under section 14 and here we will have assessable value under section 14 plus bcd this will be assessable value for integrated tax and compensation cess right so these two amounts will be calculated on the same assessable value both will be computed separately so say for example if the assessable value happens to be 10000 rupees and basic custom duty is 10% say 1000 rupees so this 11000 will be the amount on which integrated tax will be computed and 11000 will be the amount on which cess will be computed right so this cess is not going to be computed on aggregate of assessable value plus bcd plus integrated tax no it will not be done that way so that's why it is important here because the next duty which we talk about there it is going to be tax on tax on tax right but here it is given that assessable value for the integrated tax and for the compensation cess that will be same and that is aggregate of base assessable value determined under section 14 and basic custom duty okay hmm. now it says common points in the common points after the table it is given the provisions of the custom act 1962 and the rules and regulation made there under including those relating to drawback refund exemption from duty shall so far as may be applied to the duty chargeable under this section as they apply in relation to the duties liable under this act the duty or tax or cess chargeable under this section shall be in addition to any other duty imposed under this act or under any other law for the time being in force so what is clarified that though it is being charged for compensating for the gst but all the provisions of the custom act will be applicable so whether it is a question of duty drawback or it is charging of interest or it is it is a question of refund whatever be the situation say all the provisions of the custom act as well as custom tariff act will be applicable and this is in addition to any other tax right this is in addition to any other tax which is already chargeable under this act as well as under any other law the points which require consideration that says following tax should not be included integrated tax goods and services tax these are not to be included so this is only for clarification for this so need not be done again so these are two new taxes under the customs tariff act one is integrated tax another is state compensation cess right and where it is chargeable as far as integrated tax is concerned this is chargeable on import of all the goods which are subject to igst or gst in india right and cess is chargeable only on the notified goods and those notified goods are either luxury goods or those are goods and the assessable value for basic custom duties as determined under section 14 and for integrated tax and compensation cess for both the the assessable value will be for uh, assessable value under section 14 plus bcd okay so this these are three taxes till now right and the next duty that is additional custom duty special additional custom duty countervailing duty all these we are going to take up in the next lecture till then revise all this before we meet next mm -hmm.